This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Uh, dear friends, uh, he's a 80-year-old gentleman who has pseudo exfoliation and a moderately dilating pupil. The cataract is not dense. The capsule zone apparatus status is still not known. Looks all right though, since there's no obvious phacodonosis at slit lamp evaluation. So we begin the surgery. The two side ports are created. The anterior capsule is stained. OVD is injected into the eye and the main 2.8 mm incision is created. I plan to use B-hex pupillary expansion device, but before that, I'm going to stretch the pupil as this is a rigid pupil. And stretching is going to yield better midriasis and also it will be easy to place the B-hex device. Cohesive OVD is placed behind the pupil so that the iris tends up a little bit. I'm using two Y hooks through the side ports. The pupillary margin is engaged in these notches and then both the hooks are pulled in the opposite direction. Now this is repeated along four meridians and now I can see these tiny sphincterotomies having occurred because of this stretching. Before placing the B-hex device, I prefer to put in a little bit of OVD again under the iris just to create a little bit of space. To begin with, the B-hex ring is first placed on the iris. I usually prefer to place the ring in such orientation. So I like to place these segments with these holes uh, under the iris. The globe is stabilized with the second instrument and then I'm using the B-hex 23G forceps through the side port. I grasp one of these uh, holes here with the forceps and the first pair of notches are engaged onto the pupillary margin. Now similarly, the second set of notches are engaged. The hands are switched, the last pair of notches are engaged quite easily. So now we have a decent pupillary dilatation. As I puncture the anticapsule, I am trying to notice the presence of any wrinkles and there are none. As I begin to perform the rexus using a forceps, I realize that the zonules are pretty healthy and that was good news. Rexus is completed followed by a hydrodissection. The nucleus is rotated gently to confirm the absence of any corticocapsular adhesions. So it's time to phaco now. The nucleus management actually is going to be very easy. The nucleus is of the right grade so that it can be easily chopped and emulsified with ease. The tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus and then chopped into multiple fragments using a sharp chopper. A vertical chop technique is being employed here. And since the nucleus is not dense, the chopping and lateral separation maneuvers are so easy and effortless. Each of the fragments are then emulsified in a controlled manner. Now before aspirating the cortex, I typically flush the posterior capsule with BSS uh, just to clean it up and loosen the cortex. The cortex is then aspirated carefully. I repeat the flushing of the PC again to blow away any fine lens fibers uh, sticking onto the posterior capsule. After injecting OVD, the intraocular lens is placed into the bag. A multi-piece hydrophobic eye well is placed within the bag. Time to remove the B-hex ring. Typically, I would like to remove this device after the intraocular lens is implanted and before the OVD is removed. The device is first disengaged from the pupillary margin using the same forceps and then pulled out. It's very easy and quick to remove this ring. Now the OVD which is both behind the lens and in front of it is removed. The wounds are hydrated, that's it, the case is done. 
and this is the next day picture. The pupil is small and reacting to light but we can see the small sphincterotomies which is because of stretching which was done before placing the BX device. Although these tiny sphincterotomies don't have any impact on the patient's vision or cause any disturbance, uh, he should be fine. That's it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.